Unicorns Talk is a weekly podcast where we discuss the ups and downs of the human experience, from personal growth to romantic relationships and everything in between. This show is for life livers, life lovers, and life enhancers. My name is Latrice Sampson Richards, your life enhancement coach, and together we're going to laugh, love, and learn to maneuver all of life's little messes. Let's go. tuned in to episode number 23 of Unicorns Talk Podcast. My name is Latrice Sampson Richards. I am a licensed professional counselor, a certified life purpose and relationship coach for black women who are ready to heal from their past so they can build a future that they deserve. And I am so effing excited about this episode. Um, Yes, I was singing and talking at the same time just now, Um, but I'm just that excited. I know I say this every single week, but I am especially excited today. Um, you know, I've been having a really good week this week. I'm not even going to lie, y'all. Like, things are going really well um, for me in in life in general right now. And so I'm always excited to kind of share that with y'all and, and spread the love as much as I can. Um, this week has been going really well uh, across my entire business. I really feel like things are just kind of starting to fall into place for me. And so I'm always excited about that. Um, as you all know, uh, right now I am doing the Empower Your Vision Masterclass, um, which is my first ever masterclass and it is going wonderfully. Um, On Monday, we had our first Q&A session. Module 1 was last week. Uh, Module 2 is going to be tonight, actually. Uh, Today's Wednesday, so Module 2 is going to be tonight, and so um, I'm just super excited about um, the direction that everything is going. The ladies that are in the uh, master class, they really, well, from what they tell me, anyway, uh, they find it very, very beneficial, and I just love seeing people um, be able to thrive, uh, and grow. And I love seeing the little light bulbs go off in, in their minds and things. And so it's really awesome. Um, and I'm looking forward to moving forward with that. Um, so, you know, we kind of been talking about, um, well, so my episodes have really kind of mirrored what's happening over in the masterclass because I absolutely feel like there is just some foundational information that we all need to have as we embark upon vision manifestation, um, well, healing and vision manifestation. And so um, even though, you know, in, in the masterclass, I dig in a lot deeper and we really get a whole lot more information about how to actually, you know, incorporate these changes in our lives. But um, because I love y'all so much, I definitely, I want y'all to get some of that information as well. And so um, today's topic is new me, who this, uh, which I've been, I've been wanting to use that since forever. I just love it, y'all. I'm so cheesy like that. Um, but I actually really, really love it. So new me who this, okay? Um, that's how I say it in my head. New me who this. <laughs> That's how it makes sense to me in my head. Um, But that really is um, the topic for today. That's what we're going to be talking about. And it's really about, um, you know, just talking about your support network. You know, I want to talk about the company that we keep and um, why it's important for us to have a solid support system around us. Um, And then I'm also going to give you, I think, a few tips. Let me see how many I have here. Yeah, three, about three or four tips on how how to, um, you know, maintain a stronger support network, how to find your people. Okay. All right. And then of course, you know, we have the high five today um, and some shout outs and things like that. Some information I'm going to be giving y'all later on today. Uh, And I think next week, either next week or week after next, we'll see. Um, I actually am going to do the very first interview for 2018, which I am absolutely looking forward to. Um, and so I have a whole lot of stuff coming for y'all. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and get started. 
So today we're talking about support networks. And, uh, you know, as I said before, and I think as, as I would, I was about to say, as everybody knows, but not everybody does know this, um, but support network, uh, your support network is extremely important. Um, change is hard, y'all. I think um, anybody who tries to convince you otherwise um, is somebody you need to turn around and want to run away from quick fast and in a hurry okay change is hard and anytime you're embarking upon change you have to have a strong support network around you um, it's I, you know a part of me wants to say no it's not mandatory but then the other part of me is like it it kind of is mandatory um, nobody has ever gotten to where they want to be in life completely by their own on their own um, I hate when people use the term like self-made man or self-made millionaire because there is no such thing um, there is no such thing as someone who got where they are without the help of another human being or without the support of another human being or the input of another human being. You know, I think um, for a long time, people use those words self-made man um, for like Jay-Z. And I think this is really the first time it really kind of stood out to me, right? And he's this self-made millionaire. He's this self-made man. And nobody ever gave me nothing. And this, that, and the third. And I don't even know, honestly, if that's something that he said or if that's something that um, you know was just kind of placed upon him but the reality is that there was a time when nobody knew who Jay-Z was and somebody had to be the first person to play his album on the radio even if he paid that person to play his album they still played his album somebody had to be the first person to you know call him in for a meeting for a record label or something like that like somebody had to be the first person to say you know yo let's let's go in the studio and let's let's see what happens you know what i'm saying like everybody um nobody's success story occurs in isolation all right and so if you are embarking upon upon a major life change and you are trying to do that in in an isolated state your likelihood of success is extremely lessened all right so a support network definitely um having a strong support network definitely increases your chances of success it makes it a little bit easier for you to remain accountable um you know sometimes you need to be able to be accountable to people outside of yourself um it helps you to remain motivated uh when you have people who are moving in the same direction as you um and i'm going to talk a little bit more about that um in the tips section um but you know, it helps you to stay motivated to, to continue to try to achieve and attain something bigger and better, you know, um, people who can listen when you need them to listen, people who can provide advice when you need advice, um, and people who can give you real talk when it's time to give you real talk. I like to think of myself, hopefully you think of me as well in this way, but I like to think of myself as a part of your extended support network, because I genuinely am rooting for you whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish in your life no I may not have met you yet but I am genuinely rooting for you and I can definitely be a, a sounding board for you you can you know on the website latrissampsonrichards.com you can send in a uh, a you know ask Trees comment or something like if you have a, a situation that you're dealing with you can ask me that um, you can get in you know feedback or if you want advice or whatever it is or if you just need somebody to listen and get it off your chest I can do that for you as well and you know I'm always going to keep it real with y'all you know what I'm saying and so um, you know it's it's important to have people around you that can provide those types of things for you um, because it increases your chances of success um, your support network also influences your thinking and your self-esteem we've all heard the term birds of a feather flock together and that's a very real statement why do you think that is right even for women this is going to get gross for a second so if there's any men listening um, go ahead and prepare yourself for that okay 
But, you know, women that that spend a significant amount of time with each other, like when women start hanging around each other for a while, your your period starts to line up with each other, right? Every woman has experienced that. When you start spending more and more time with a, a woman or with other women, your periods, your bodily clock, I guess we can call that um it lines up it aligns with each other okay this is basic human nature it is in our nature to mimic each other and so when you have a strong support system around you a strong support network around you where you can you have people who are engaging in behaviors that can help get you to the next level then it's good it's a good thing that we mimic each other you know what i'm saying it it begins to influence your thinking if you're spending all of your time with people who can't see past tomorrow then how are you ever going to see past tomorrow or or see past tomorrow enough so that you can start to plan for tomorrow and things like that okay um everybody you know human beings we have this deep need for love and belonging and so it's important to us to feel like we are a part of something bigger and when you have the right support network around you that is something bigger right like we hear about people all the time who who grew up in the hood and things like that and they got the whole hood behind them trying to support them and saying yes you can do this you know you can do this even we've heard everybody has heard stories of like you know to do with the, the wanting to be a drug dealer or wanting to be in the streets I'm reading Tiffany Haddish's book right now um the last black unicorn and um she she says and like you know I wanted so bad to be hood I wanted to be a street girl and the drug dealers and stuff was like girl get your smart ass off of this street you know what i'm saying like you even the drug dealers and the people who are not doing what they need or or what's in the maybe the best interest of the community even those people support you and that is being a part of something bigger this feeling that it's not just for me it is for me but it's not just for me it's for the whole hood it's for the whole network you get what i'm saying so it can start to influence your thought process how you see your success, how you see your ability to achieve success and things of that nature. And the goal here is to try to impact that in a positive way. All right. Um, In my opinion, um, there are two types of support networks. So I think that there's a steady support network or what um, I think I really feel more comfortable calling like your constant your core support network and then you have kind of like this variable or a prn support network okay your core your core support network is your group of friends or family that will always be there like these are the people who are always going to be there they genuinely want to see you be successful and it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody that you've known your entire life it doesn't have to necessarily be somebody that um that you're blood related to you know it could be like I have people that I met in college that are like in my core support group and even though we all live in different states different countries um, everybody has their own thing going on some of us have kids some of us are living a single life some like we're in different stages in our lives we still check in with each other and we are still a major you know core support system for each other even though we're not interacting on a regular basis so you know that core group of people who have your back no matter what what who are always there you can go months without talking to that person and you know that when you call them they're going to be there and vice versa right um i like to think of like oprah and gail when it comes to this because y'all know how i feel about me some oprah i love me some oprah okay um and so i like to think about you know that connection that relationship that oprah and gail have with each other i think people who have never really experienced that type of support that type of unconditional care and and genuine happiness um, for each other people who've never had strong connections like that it's hard for them to even wrap their heads around so that like the fact that something like that could actually exist but it does and it can okay um and so 
you know, find your Gail, girl, or really find your Oprah. You know, why Gail always got to be the Gail? Gail could be the Oprah sometimes, if that makes sense. Y'all know what I'm saying, okay? So, because Gail got her own thing going on. <laughs> like, we always talking about Oprah, you know, Gail's, uh, Oprah, Oprah's Gail, but, you know, Oprah is, is Gail's Oprah, you know? And so they support each other equally. Um, and that's an amazing thing, okay? The variable or what I call the PRN group, those are the people that float in and out of your life as needed, PRN. So though, for those of you who are in the medical profession, you know what PRN means, right? I don't know what PRN actually means, but I know... Um, what PRN means, okay? Um, PRN means as needed. If you if you get a medication or something like that, if a if a doctor writes a prescription and they put PRN on it, then that means take as needed, okay? So these are your PRN people. You they come in and out of your life as needed. Um, it is possible for a PRN person to transition into your core group over time, but don't allow yourself to get too attached to a PRN person, okay? Because it's important that you know when it's time to let them go. And if you allow yourself to get too attached, then you're really setting yourself up for, well, first of all, it can cause you to stall out in terms of your dreams um, and, and your manifestation, okay? But then also, it can cause an onslaught of negative feelings, experiences, emotions. If you think back to some of, you know, the negative relationships that you've had in your life nine times out of ten those people were supposed to leave your life long before they actually did and so you know what happens is it gets worse and worse um, over time you get more and more miserable because those people have overstayed their welcome or you've overstayed and you've overstayed your welcome okay um, you have to know when to let go they serve a very specific purpose in your life and you serve a very specific purpose in theirs maybe their purpose in your life is to teach you a lesson maybe your purpose is to teach them a lesson whatever it is this relationship is not a lifelong relationship this is not one that's going that you're going to keep with you forever okay the relationship will fade or or it's going to change drastically when that purpose is served and there tends to be this natural transition out of the relationship right like we didn't really have an argument nothing really happened uh, we just don't talk as much as we used to that is a natural transition uh, let that happen let that happen when when it's time for people to leave your life we have to be willing to let them leave because that means that their purpose has been served in our lives in ours in theirs and it's time to move on and figure out what the lesson is that we were supposed to learn from them and from that experience and and apply it to our lives moving forward okay so your core group of people those are the relationships that you really want to nurture your i mean you want to nurture all of your relationships because even those PRN relationships those can be significant um, at that time you know what I'm saying like those relationships serve a purpose they're not just throwaway relationships they actually serve a purpose in your life and so um, you definitely want to you know uh, nurture those relationships as well but also know when to let it go and be okay with letting it go when it's time all right Okay, so that's it in terms of just giving you like a, a overview of like why support networks are important, okay? And just giving you some background on support networks. And now I want to give you just a few tips, well about four, I have about four tips that I want to give you on how to find your people. So how do I find my support network? How do I find and identify my core group? But then how do I also find and identify my PRN people? Okay, so the first tip that I want to give you is that um, across all of your relationships, um, well, your specifically your PRN relationships, um, you want to try to stay within two to three levels ahead 
side of where you are at all times. And so what I mean by that is, um, you know, whatever metric you are using to judge or determine your success, then you want to try to align yourself with people who are two to three levels ahead of where you currently are, okay? Two to three levels ahead of where you currently are. So if you're using finances to determine your success, if you're saying, I want to make a certain amount of money, this is where I am now, then you need to break that into levels. You need to break that into brackets. So these are the people that I consider to be in my bracket currently, right? That's level one. These are the people that I can, or ground zero, I guess, let's call it, that um, I consider to be on on my level financially, right? So two to three levels ahead would be people who are two to three brackets ahead. So it may not be where you want to end up, but it's further along by at least two to three steps than where you are currently. So for example, if you currently make about $10,000, and this is a completely arbitrary number I'm using like strictly for the purposes of this um, example, okay? If you currently make $10,000 a year and your vision, your goal for yourself is to make $100,000 a year, right? That $100,000, that's 10 levels ahead of where you are currently. Okay, you want to start surrounding yourself with people who are making twenty to thirty thousand dollars more than what you're making, or really thirty to forty thousand dollars more than what you're making, because that's two to three levels ahead. So if I'm at level zero, right, if $10,000 is level zero, then level one would be $20,000. Level two would be $30,000. Level three would be $40,000. You get what I'm saying? Okay. So using that example, you want to start surrounding yourself with people who are making thirty to forty thousand dollars more, uh, uh, thirty to forty thousand dollars a year. Okay, it's not the hundred thousand dollars where you want to be, right? But it's more than where you are currently. The reason why I think that this is a good, you know, way to kind of gauge where you are or to to really kind of start. I think a good foundation is, is the word I'm looking for in terms of starting to build your support network is because if you go too far out, it might have an inadvertent, uh, like a adverse kind of Re, uh, re, re, reaction for you, okay? Um, if you go too far out, it may make you feel worse about yourself. You know, we talked about this idea of, you know, belonging and being a part of something bigger and how um, your support network influences your thinking and your self-esteem. Um, it can end up causing you harm if you start surrounding yourself with people who are making a hundred thousand dollars a year and you're not anywhere near that and so they're doing things that they can do at a hundred thousand dollars a year and you can't do those things because you're just not there yet right and it can inadvertently start making you feel worse about your situation or start feeling overwhelmed about the magnitude of it all right i'm just making ten thousand dollars a year they're making a hundred thousand dollars a year but look at what all they're doing to get to that and they have this they have this established they have that done and oh my god like I'm never going to get to that place right it can feel a little overwhelming I think another um you know I don't want to say danger but I think another you know caution there is that it may cause you to overestimate where you are in that moment, right? So the other side of that is that it could cause you to overestimate where you are in that moment going too far out. So if I'm dealing with people that are making $100,000 and I'm just only making $10,000, well, then I might try to start making $100,000 moves. And guess what? I'm not at $100,000, like they can make those moves. They can take trips to Costa Rica and they can buy, you know, 
Fendi bags or do people still wear Fendi bags? I don't know. I'm not really into bags and stuff like that. I'm sticking with my little Michael Kors. Like it took me forever to buy a name brand bag. You know what I'm saying? Not that I couldn't afford it, but because I just was never really into stuff like that, you know? And so now me and my little Michael, we, we, we hang tough, you know, we do, we do our thing, but it might, you know, hanging with people or spending time with people that are too far advanced, from where you are it might cause you to overestimate where you are in that moment and actually end up doing more harm than good okay um on the contrary uh surrounding yourself with people that are too close um may not push you hard enough and it might make you feel like you've arrived i used to date this guy that um you know before we dated he had never lived in his own apartment before and so i had been on my own for a while and so the fact that like once we moved in together and stuff like that um you know and and then you know whatever he's my ex so she, clearly shit didn't work out and um he ended up getting his own apartment he was surrounded by people who still had roommates or people who uh, still live with their parents or still live with their family and stuff like that so to him because that was the only people that he was surrounded by he felt like he had arrived you know I'm doing better than my wildest imagination and I'm like you got a house like you got an apartment like in, on my radar on my ranking of things that's at the bottom of the list you know what I'm saying like that's I've been living on my own for a while you know and so but for him it was a big deal that he was living on his own and he was doing better than everybody that he knew and so it he was not motivated to do anything more because he was already the big the big dog as they say okay so you it's okay to have people in your corner that are at the same level and you can definitely draw motivation from each other but you want to make sure that you are also surrounding yourself with people who are two to three levels ahead of you okay if you look around and you are the best at everything you are the top dog if you look around and everybody you know is doing worse than you or everybody you know is looking up to you then you need to start thinking about making a jump to another pond I'm not saying leave your people behind that's not what I'm saying at all but what I am saying is that you need to be able to grow as well okay sometimes it's helpful to be the small fish in the pond all right Okay, the next tip that I want to give you is to evaluate your current relationships. So um, in the masterclass, I really dig into this. So I'm going to kind of just give y'all the Cliff's Notes version of this. Um, and if you want to learn more, then you got to get the masterclass, okay? Um, but uh but this is still really good information. So you want to evaluate your current relationships. Um, there's, you know, I think the question that you want to ask yourself is the people that currently make up your support network, are they really your tribe, right? Like, are these your core group of people? Are these your people or are they just available to you? Okay are they just available to you because what happens a lot of times is that we end up keeping people around us because they don't have anywhere else to go or because we don't have anywhere else to go and it's not that these people are really our people it's just that they're available they're there and I don't want to be by myself right and so that's never a good place to find yourself all right you want to make sure that the people that you surround yourself with are your people these are people that get you whatever even if it's different facets of who you are um, like all the contrary to popular belief all of your friends don't need to be friends okay you can have different subgroups of friends okay and it, and and I have a whole like model for this okay um, but you your friends don't have to be friends you can have friend groups or support groups that support the different aspects of who you are so if you're a mom then you can have a mommy group 
that supports you as a mom. If you are a poet, then you can have a poetry group that supports you as a poet, as a creative, right? If you are a wife, then you can have a wife group that supports you in, in being a wife, right? And the moms don't need to know the wives, and, and the wives don't need to know the poets, right? These are the different facets of who you are. And so your job is to make sure that you are feeding yourself, okay? And I'm going to talk more about that, um, you know, in a little bit, in one of the next, uh, I think it's the last one, okay? Um, another thing is that as you grow, you will find that some people just cannot find it in themselves to cheer you on. And so all I really want to say about this right now is that um, I think the first thing that we always go to is, oh, child, they jealous. I just, I hate when people say that. Oh, she jealous, girl. She just jealous because you got this and you got that and you all of this and you all of that and she ain't got none of that. I think you know, we rely on that too much. And, and I could get real deep about it. I'm gonna try not to get real deep about it. Um, in the sense of, you know, we were definitely groomed this way. Um, you know, to black women, but black people in general, just they've been pitting us against each other for a very long time. Um, and so our first thought is always that people who don't root for us, or people who can't root for us, are jealous of us and I just don't believe that everybody is jealous like I don't think that that is always the reason for it I think that sometimes it's really about the mirror that you are holding up to them and their accomplishments or lack thereof right and so it's not always that they're jealous I think more often than not it's that seeing you be successful, seeing you pursue your dreams, seeing you accomplish tasks that you set out to accomplish, seeing you do those things reminds them of their own stagnation. Okay? And that's different than jealousy. Jealousy has an envious kind of uh, touch to it, right? But it's, you know, looking at it from this other perspective in the sense of you know this mirror like looking in the mirror kind of thing I think that gives that's a whole different way of looking at the situation I don't think it's always that they don't want to be happy for you I think sometimes they genuinely cannot because in their world in their bubble seeing you do these things reminds them that they haven't done these things it reminds them that they had dreams they had hopes they had aspirations and they had a lot of reasons why they didn't make it happen and that's a very hard pill to swallow okay so don't take it personally when you are engaging your growth journey and you have to start dropping some people off and or people start to show themselves not everybody can be happy for you or maybe even some people might talk shit about you you know some people might talk shit about you pain rears, rears its head in a many a many different ways all right but don't take it personally they can't come where you going that that's their issue. They have to work on their issue. You can't take it on for them. All right. Okay. So as you evaluate your current relationships, you want to nourish the relationships that have the highest potential to, you know, to be supportive um, and mutually beneficial. And you want to adjust the relationships that either no longer serve you or cause you harm. And this adjustment can simply be a tweak in the relationship or it can be a termination of the relationship. Okay. And so this is a process that I call people categorization. And I definitely, you know, teach this step by step in the masterclass, right? But it, this is where it starts. It starts with the evaluation of those relationships. All right. The third tip that I want to give you is to get very clear about your expectations and your boundaries. All right. So I have a whole theory about expectations and boundaries. I know I told y'all about tree schisms before, right? So I have a whole tree schism about expectations and boundaries. Tree schisms are how I make sense of the world. Um, and so uh, I, I like to throw out tree schisms from time to time. Okay. So 
in my treatism, <laughs> expectations and boundaries are really kind of like two sides of the same coin. I think the expectations are a personal experience, right? Expectations are for you and boundaries are for the world around you, okay? Boundaries are expectations outlined for the rest of the world all right so an expectation is a personal understanding this is what I want this is what I need this is what I expect right and then the boundary is the communication of the expectation to the outside world right this is the line and I need you to not cross it this is the boundary okay so expectations are for you Boundaries are for the world around you. And this is a little bit deeper. It goes a little deeper than that. Um, but that's a good place to start. All right. Um, as you uh, get clear about your expectations and your boundaries, you want to make sure that your expectations are realistic and that they are appropriate. All right. Realistic in the sense that they need to include what is actually important to you. So you have to be real about what is important to you. You have to be honest with yourself about what you can and cannot handle, all right? And and what it is that you absolutely need to have in your life and what it is that, you know, is really just not that important, all right? Um, and again, like I said, this process, I, I go a lot more into uh, detail in the masterclass and really break this down, right? Um, but then you also want to make sure that your expectations are appropriate, meaning that they, they need to be based on the nature of the relationship or the circumstance. So given this relationship, based on who this person has shown themselves to be, is my expectation of them appropriate? Based on who they have always shown me that they are, the way that they've interacted with me, the way that they've interacted with other people, is this an appropriate expectation for this person? Right? Is it appropriate expectation for this situation, for this circumstance? Right? Based on, like, for Mardi Gras, it's not appropriate to expect that you're going to get a parking space super easy. That's not an appropriate expectation for the circumstance. All right? So if you go to Mardi Gras and you get mad about the parking situation, well, shame on you. Shame on you. Right? Because your expectation was inappropriate to begin with. Does that make sense? I hope it does. All right? So you want to make sure that those expectations and boundaries are realistic and appropriate. And then the last tip that I have for y'all is to indulge in yourself. So this is, you know, finding your people, finding new people, I think really starts with getting familiar with who you are um, and getting comfortable with who you are okay getting comfortable with the, with that fact all right um it helps you to be able to attract complementary spirits you know we talk about the law of attraction we talk about vibrating at a higher frequency and things like that i think the more comfortable that you get in your own skin and the more you really allow yourself to be who you are and and to express that this is who you are then the more competent and confident you become in your selection process so you start choosing people who can accept you for who you are because now I'm comfortable in my skin so I can find people who are also comfortable with me in this skin but who are comfortable with themselves in their skin as well okay you want to explore the parts of you that you've either been too afraid to show or the parts of you that you've shown in the past and have had to you know try to suppress 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 because the world told you it wasn't okay for you to be that person okay explore those parts all right and and see what happens indulge in yourself all right okay so those are your four tips all right stay within two to three levels ahead of where you are at all times evaluate your current relationships are they your people or are they just available get clear about your expectations and boundaries make sure that they are realistic and appropriate and then indulge in yourself explore 
who you are, put that on display, and and your people will find you. You will be though though you will attract your people. Okay. All right. So that's all I have for y'all in terms of, um, you know, the topic portion of this. So coming up next is high five. All right. So today's high five actually is going to an entire movement. So there is this black superhero movement that is going on right now and I am like really fucking loving it like I'm not even gonna lie y'all um it is amazing and I love to see it happen because black people are superheroes um so there's this black superhero moment that's really taking place right now and um you know I'm one thing to know about me that I I mean I don't know I feel like at this point a lot of people should know this about me but I think people when people first look at me they don't assume this and that really bothers me but I enjoy a superhero movie okay um I love a superhero movie like X-Men love okay um like Luke Cage love um so there's like this black superhero um movement that's happening and um we've had black superheroes in the past but now we are really seeing black superheroes come to the forefront and they are in lead roles right like carrying entire movies entire shows um entire series and so i'm super excited about this so you know that the black panther movie is coming out on february 16th and i am so ridiculously excited about this movie y'all um it it's it is I have no words I have no words to describe how excited I am about this movie um the Black Panther movie is set in Africa and is actually the highest grossing pre-sale tickets in Marvel history right like so pre-sale tickets went on sale the other day or like maybe a week ago last week sometime or something like that and it is the highest grossing pre-sale tickets in Marvel history um they even beat out Captain America like this movie is going to be huge and I am so here for it okay um we getting all up in Africa you know Viva Laquanda all right Laquanda look I didn't say the wrong name Viva Laquanda um it's it's just it's amazing and I love that um the the Black Panther is a is a uh prince and so or is he a king I think he's a king listen I like the movies and stuff but I'm not like a super duper fan I'm not one of those people that like dress up for comic-con and stuff um so don't hate me to all of those people who are um but there's another show um so there's Black Panther and then there's another show that just aired this week I think on January 16th um and it's called black lightning and so it's almost like the black flash you know um and so it comes on the cw and um it debuted on january 16th to 2.3 million viewers so it actually had a very sturdy um like a, a really good debut um and i'm gonna be honest i don't watch a lot of like regular television but i just saw the commercial for this for the very first time like two days ago you know what i'm saying but I will definitely be checking it out and trying to support that as well and then of course like I mentioned earlier we got Luke Cage um you know I love me some Luke Cage he's on Netflix um he came out on Netflix in 2016 and Luke Luke Cage is like freaking amazing. Um, he wears a hoodie. He's bulletproof. Like he's everything. Okay. And so um, high five to the black superhero moment that's happening right now. I hope that we can see much, much more of it because you know, in my mind, black people have always been superheroes. Now, what I will say is I would like to see some black female superheroes. I know we got Storm and I love me some Storm, but I would like to see some leading lady um, kind of black superhero moments. Um, we got, you know, I guess Proud Mary, but Proud Mary ain't really a superhero, is she? Um, I don't know. I haven't seen that movie yet, uh, but I think I am going to go see it because, um, you know, I enjoy me some Taraji. Um, but yeah, so high five to the black superhero moment that's happening right now. Um, 
I want to give a shout out to um, a couple of people and podcasts. Um, so again, I want to give a shout out to Black Mary Fly podcast over at BYNK Radio. Um, this is one of my favorite podcasts, y'all. I listen to them all the time. Um, you know, it is a podcast about marriage, millennial marriage um, from the Black folk perspective. And Candace and Trev are the host. They are a married couple and they are Black and they are fly as hell. And so, um, you know, check out Black Mary Fly podcast if you get a chance. I also want to give a shout out to Crystal Clear podcast. Um, I wanted to give her a shout out last week, but it it totally slipped my mind because the shout out thing is still kind of new for me. But um, I want to do it because these are podcasts that I actually listen to. And, you know, I want I want, you know, to just give them some love. Um, And they've shown me a lot of love, to be honest. But Crystal Clear Podcast is the first podcast that I ever listened to, to be honest. And um, I love Crystal. Hey, Crystal. Hey, girl. And um, I love Crystal Clear. uh, The podcast is really about her journey. So, you know, we talk about the steps to moving along our journey here on Unicorns Talk Podcast. And Crystal is really sharing her journey, you know, and I like I like the way that she does it. And so, um, shout out to Crystal Clear Podcast. Shout out to It's Whatever Podcast. They've shown so much love. Um, and I really enjoy their show. Um, you know, it's it's like, how many of y'all is it? I think it's like four hosts, um, which sounds like a lot. And I don't normally like to listen to that many people talking at one time. But I don't know. I kind of, I feel like it works. You know, it works. And so um, shout out to what It's Whatever podcast. Also, the Evolving Chair podcast with Lakeisha. Um, hey, Lakeisha Russell. Hey, Lakeisha. Um, she's also a clinician. And um, she does a really good job of um, helping helping us to to heal our mind and and our spirit okay so um shout out to the evolving chair podcast and then finally um not a podcast but um i want to give a big shout out to true north wellness um and its founder danielle Burrell. hey danny um i just want to say hey girl hey uh, danielle and i are working on some things some really big things for the black unicorn project which you know is my community website um, the black unicorn project and so we had a really good meeting on yesterday and I feel very good about the direction that things are going in Um, I think I'm actually going to have her on the show because she is a wealth of information Um, but you know we'll make that happen um, eventually right Um, so hey Danielle shout out to true north wellness check them out y'all if you get a chance Uh, what else do I have going on Um, The Black Unicorn Project, oh, the Black Unicorn Project is doing big things. So this week, we actually launched two things, two new things. So, you know, I told y'all last week on Mondays, we are doing Mind, Body, Soul Mondays. And so this was like our first official, like, Mind, Body, Soul Monday. So we did um, our first recipe, um, which I have been wanting to do recipes, y'all, for literally like two years now. And my line sister has been like, when you going to start the recipes? When you going to do the recipes? So now we have recipes. Um, well, we have one. We have a recipe. <laughs> it's the first of many. Um, and it's the fruitlicious dinner salad recipe. Y'all, this salad is the bomb dot. I'm telling y'all, this salad is so good. So head over to the theblackunicornproject.com and check out the fruitlicious salad recipe, dinner salad recipe. It's a whole meal just by itself, y'all, and it is so freaking good. Um, and then this week, we also launched the Buy Black Review. Um, and so we are, the Black Unicorn Project is accepting product submissions um, of Black-owned products that um, you would like to get reviewed. And so I am super, y'all, this is really like, um, this is something like that has been in the making for a long time. And it's very, very close to my heart. I am so, so proud of the Buy Black Review. Um, And so, you know, head on over to the website, um, theblackunicornproject.com and um, check out the Buy Black Review. Um, If you have, if you are a black owned business um, right now, um, we're just getting started. So, um, you know, we're 
only doing like non-perishable items and things like that. But as we grow, we are going to expand to not only products, but also like businesses, like restaurants and uh, tech companies and like all of these different, um, you know, because black people are everywhere and black people are inventing all kinds of things. And so, um, you know, eventually we are going to expand out to try to capture as many things like events and and happenings and things like that as well but for right now we're just getting started so we're doing non-perishable products um, uh, which can actually include a whole lot of things so to find out more information go to the black unicorn project.com and um, check out the guidelines and and make sure that you understand the selection process um, and it's completely free to submit your product it's completely free to get your product reviewed there's no guarantee that your product will be reviewed but hey shoot your shot I did an episode on that Go back and listen to it. Shoot your freaking shot, you know? Never know what could happen, all right? So that's what the Black Unicorn Project has going on. Of course, I still have my Facebook group, Trust Village, and we are growing, growing, growing. We actually have over 300 members now, Um, and so that's a big deal. Um, I'm really excited about that. Um, I also do From Scratch Live, which is a, a Facebook Live show that I do, like a vlog that I do on Thursday. Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time um, on my Facebook page, which is Latrice Sampson Richards, Life Enhancement Coach. And so make sure that you go and like me on Facebook um, so that you can know when I'm going live. That'll be tomorrow, okay? And of course, make sure that you follow us on all of the social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Unicorns Talk Pod, and uh, rate us on iTunes. I know y'all are listening because y'all are telling me that y'all are listening, but I need y'all to tell other people that you're listening as well, okay? And so when you rate the show on iTunes, it actually helps um, in terms of getting my name out there and things like that. So share me with the world. Let the people know that you enjoy the show. Let the people know, hey, this girl is over here and she talking some real deal shit and y'all might want to check her out, okay? I appreciate y'all. All right, so I think that's it. That is, oh no, one last thing. Rich Girl Live. So my business coach, her name is Tiffany Williams, and she has a business, her business is called the Rich Girl Collective. And so she really teaches women how to quit their nine to five um, by building an online empire. And so she is helping me to get my life in this online world. And um, I will be speaking at her event, uh, Rich Girl Live. And this is a really, really big deal. Rich Girl live is like it's an intense like one-on-one well it's not one-on-one but it's a small group session there'll be 50 women there um, and you it's all about getting your business life together so if you have a business idea if you have a business that's you've already started and you're trying to grow it um, things like that it is a group intensive and um, she is amazing and so um, she has asked me to speak at her event and so I am honored by this so if you want to meet me girl come on down it's going to be in New Orleans um, which is always a good time you know I'm born and raised in New Orleans and so um, I'm really looking forward to that so you can find out more information about Rich Girl Live at richgirllive.com okay and so yeah what else that's it y'all that's it all right so as usual, I love y'all and I appreciate y'all. Okay. I really appreciate y'all. And so, um, until next time, be well. Bye.